When taking measurements, it's important to consider the dynamic response of your measurement system. When the physical quantity that we're measuring is pressure, we need to consider the response of the transducer and also of the tubing associated with it and the response of the fluid inside the tubing. Here is the magnitude of the pressure at the transducer for a harmonic input with magnitude P0 to the start of the tube. And we see that this is dependent on the frequency of the input pressure and also the characteristics of the system. So the natural frequency of this tubing and volume and the damping ratio. The natural frequency depends on the geometry, so the radius of the tube, the length of the tube, and the volume here that's in contact with the transducer. And it also depends on the speed of sound in that fluid. So that's given by this expression. And the damping ratio is given here, and that uh, excuse me, that depends on the viscosity of the fluid and the density and the geometry involved. So here's an expression for that. So let's look and see how the pressure at the transducer is going to behave in terms of the input pressure and the geometry. It turns out that <coughs> one can use the tubing involved in order to create a mechanical low-pass filter for a pressure transducer. Here is the gain for the filter and you see that the pressure at the transducer is always going to be less than the pressure at the start of the tubing. And here's the gain for a, an nth order low pass filter. So we want to see how these two compare. So just expanding the terms in the denominator we get this expression. <coughs> And you can see that when the damping ratio zeta is equal to square root of 2 over 2, then this gain is equal to the low pass filter gain for a second order system. So n is 2. Uh, when this term here is 0, then these are equal where n is 2. And if we were to have values of zeta less than that, so lighter damping than 0.7, uh, we would have this term minus this term. So it would be a it would act like a less than second order filter. So that means that the attenuation would be less than 12 dB per octave after the cutoff frequency. And you can also see here that the natural frequency for this tubing acts like the cutoff frequency for the filter, for a filter. And if we had damping ratio greater than square root of 2 over 2, then this would have a steeper att rate of attenuation than 12 dB per octave. So it would act like it would, uh, you'd have a, fast, a higher cutoff rate than a second order filter. <coughs> it's possible to tune the system in order to get the cutoff frequency and damping ratio that you desire. You can adjust if you have different values of tube radius then you can adjust the damping ratio and you can change the natural frequency or cutoff frequency by adjusting the length. So using those two parameters you can tune your low pass filter for the pressure transducer. The most common means of generating an electrical signal from uh, pressure or measuring pressure and generating electrical signal is by using a diaphragm gauge. This comprises a thin sheet of metal with a pressure differential, so P1 and P2. The difference between those is given as P and that causes a displacement Y and that displacement depends on the, the geometry, so the width of this diaphragm and then the, the position along the diaphragm where you're considering it. So there'd be no displacement at the edge and maximum displacement in the middle. From mechanics of materials we know that the displacement is given by this expression. So the thickness is in the denominator and 
you can see that the maximum displacement is going to be when r is equal to zero, that is whenever you're looking at the center of the diaphragm. The output of these sensors is usually linear with pressure as long as the deflection remains less than about one-third of the thickness of the diaphragm. And a couple of means for measuring the deflection are to use strain gauges on the diaphragm. So that incorporates materials, mechanics of materials theory in order to get the displacement from the strain. <coughs> Or we could measure the displacement directly here with an LVDT. You could also use a capacitive displacement transducer. Any way of measuring the displacement directly can give you pressure. And these types of transducers are good for high frequency pressure measurements as opposed to mechanical pressure transducers or mechanical pressure sensors um, such as a manometer 